working with James, the experience of being photographed by him. Unlike previous speakers, I'm not a photographer, I'm not an artist, I'm not a curator, I'm not an academic. Um, but what I am was, and isn't that interesting, we thought about several of the presentations, was, is, past and present, photographs, do they, are they in the present, are they in the past? Well, be that as it may, I was a subject of James, and I'd like to describe that experience. So, what I have to say is subjective, not objective. It's emotional rather than rational and documentary. And it's impressionistic rather than, shall I say, clinical. But clinical is where I shall start, because that was my own working career. And um, I'd like to draw some analogies some parallels between James and a country doctor. Because James possessed and displayed many of the qualities that I would associate with good medicine, good doctors. He was observant and sensitive to a great variety of clues. He was a very good listener. He used few words, especially when he was working. He knew what to say and when not to say. And he never seemed to be in a rush. He was patient, persistent, and tolerant. And he had a depth of technical knowledge and experience, which he could draw upon. He wore it very lightly, but he could draw upon it to his great advantage. But above all, above all, he was gentle and attentive, and he had this deep, interest in and love of people. It wasn't as though he didn't actually have a definite and very distinctive ego himself, but when he was at work, he minimized it. What was important, the center of attention, was the subject, not the observer. There was a quietness about James, which extended beyond his soft voice. His very presence at work was quiet. Others have talked about James's remarkable ability to shrink, to blend, to disappear, to almost vanish, which wasn't totally true because James was not a short man <laughs> and he had a bulky camera, as you've seen from previous pictures. The point is that one forgot that he was there. I would forget and so would the patient, and so would onlookers. James's presence, he made himself ignored. Nobody ever in these pictures is actually looking at James. Rather, there's that familiar look, speaking as a doctor, that patients often have as they gaze into the middle distance. Nobody's noticing James at all here, we're just getting on with the job. And here again. And James is actually quite close if you look at my feet. And again. Another characteristic look that patients have is a sort of immediate focus on the conversation, on the words being spoken. And you see that here. Again, James is very, very close, but nobody's noticing James at all. There's a lot going on, and he's captured it. And here we have a conversation in a farmyard. Ditto, ditto. And here, the same. James allowed, indeed encouraged, the subject to lead the process. The subject to be in charge, if you like. In medical parlance, we would say, for consultations to be patient-led. I can't remember ever James asking anybody to move, or me to move, or him shifting anything. He would, he would rather nimbly dart about, out of sight, almost unnoticed. Just how many times his shutter clicked, and it did click, I cannot say. But um, when we saw the contact sheets afterwards, 
I was astonished at how many pictures he'd taken. We had completely forgotten he was there. While, uh, while he, he, we've heard a lot about his sense of humour, and I'd love to tell you some stories, because I've got several, but I don't have the time now. But James, James had a great sense of humour. We had a lot of fun. And I'd like to say that general practice, like photography, also has a lot of laughs. Um, everybody, even though he tried to minimise it, um, on occasions, James would smile. And he had the most lovely smile. It's a corny thing to say, but James's smile would indeed light up a room. More laughter, more fun. But, the other side of the coin, there were some very seriously intimate and poignant moments. I don't think, I don't think any other photographer could have taken this photograph, actually. It was, it was very intimate, very poignant, and it depended upon trust, acceptance, the, what did we have earlier, the, the care of innocence. And this old lady was shortly to die, and I find this a very moving photograph, and it is a testament to some of those qualities, those, if you like, uh, doctor qualities that I highlighted earlier. And here's another one, tears, tears on the doorstep. The doctor rather clumsily trying to say something nice or whatever. What a photograph. What trust underpins that. What affection. And here, this is one of my favourite photographs of all. It's almost, I think it's almost a sacred moment. Lizzie was blind from birth. She'd become deaf in old age. She had a terrible deformity, you can't quite see, but her foot is at an extraordinary angle. Um, and all she could do, her sole form of communication, both sensory and expressive, was that hand. Isn't it expressive? Um, and James loved hands, actually. Uh, you see some more hands. But again, what other photographer could capture that moment, that very, very special moment? So, under James's kind eye, I, I, my patients and I could actually um, relax and relate to each other. We could establish understanding, and we could sort things out. And it might even have been that James's own presence was in a way, if you like, therapeutic. Perhaps it facilitated some of all this, because we've heard a lot about connection, relatedness, affection, respect and trust. Certainly, no one ever, ever showed any signs of discomfiture, which is remarkable, really. I always asked people's permission before. Nobody ever refused it. And it was rather nice because sometimes when I'd revisit some of these people, um, they expected James to be with me again. <laughs> they rather hoped that he'd be there the next time. General practice, with all its uncertainties, its lack of resources, heightened emotions, and heavy responsibilities can be a demanding, a stressful, and sometimes a very lonely occupation. And James managed to capture this. He could understand it. James was always enjoyable. It was enjoyable for me to share my own professional pleasures and satisfactions and my own distress, anger and other negative emotions with him. It was enjoyable to witness his own professionalism at work. It was enjoyable particularly to know that together we were creating something that was special and going to last. And it was always enjoyable, as I've suggested, simply to introduce James to my patients, my friends, to create new friendships and to enjoy people with him. James had an extraordinary ability to put people at their ease. It's 
Sounds like a tribute to the Queen, doesn't it? <laughs> this is undoubtedly underpinned by his, his love of people. People, whoever they may be, but particularly people in their context. I love the symmetry here, the harmony, the rhythm. People in their context. People in their context. And this one, which is, I think, a truly beautiful photograph. So I learned much from James. Um, I learnt from his skills, perhaps I even became a slightly better doctor. So what I say, and past and present do get all mixed up, don't they, and the future. What I say to James, and I say it now in the present tense, thank you James, I feel privileged to have been granted a kind of immortality, having been photographed by you. I feel privileged indeed to have been on the other side of your camera, to have been your subject, and to have learnt from you, and to have, in the theme of this symposium today, and the book, it's about friendship, to have enjoyed your friendship. Thank you.